Hey, welcome to the show. There are there are two things of patterns I normally see when it comes to uh stories about trying to claim to be to be able to debunk or you know see the flaws or some sort of effect of MMT. MMT is, I think it's been coined to be a framework of how the current economic system works. And it's very true because if you look at modern monetary theory and the categories it tells you to look in, uh, that kind of tells you to look in other areas. Like, for instance, um, they when they point out a, a I don't know, a, a country that they claimed to try MFT because they had uh, printed money. They don't tell you the details involved in why they had to print money uh, or, you know, stuff of that nature. They don't even tell you whether or not they have outside currency debt. Uh, Sri Lanka, for instance, has a outside debt with IMF. Uh and other countries like that. Uh, IMF is basically a uh, United States-backed uh, international monetary fund. Basically, majority of the funds they lend out are in USD, since USD is the world reserve. Um, anyway, so I've, there was a story on... Uh, I'm probably going to butcher his name, but uh, uh, Mises or something to that effect... Uh, institute, which is a, a Austrian educational, I think, uh, institute, <clears throat> teaching people the quote unquote finer points of Austrian economics, and at least that's the uh, that's the impression I've gotten. However, where their uh, Hayek uh, inspired economic uh, theory. Um, from what I could tell, goes into fractional uh, reserve uh, banking. Basically, may take you in, like, say, and so it's, it's the usual example, the $100 and taking, like, 90 of it and uh, using it for other loans or something to try to get, you know, uh, a investment rate to it. And then once that, say, loan is um, repaid, then the depositor is repaid, what they uh what, what they lent what they allowed the bank to lend out uh, and so on and so forth uh i think the latest one that i can see and is the only part is the only one that i can only because of the fact that the guy is a austrian economics and that's peter schiff peter schiff got in trouble with his uh i guess euro pacific bank which one, it was it, it was basically being investigated by five different jurisdictions, one of which was the IRS. And as far as I know, it was in I think it was in Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. Uh, territory, but it doesn't receive any kind of votes or you know some to, in other words, it's kind of like the I hate to say it, but the the quote unquote bastard son or bastard kid anyway. Um, Again, I mean, no, no disrespect for anybody who is from, speaks, or is related to Puerto Ricans. Uh, that's the only that's the only uh, example I, I can come up with at the moment. Anyway, so uh, Europe Pacific was apparently, uh, quote unquote, accidentally used depositors' funds for, uh, oh, was it daily functions of sorts? Um, and so Peter Schiff uh, had to not only sell his gold, some of his gold, to repay the depositor, but also had to pay like $255,000 in fines and such. And the bank was deemed uh, insolvent because it wasn't a, uh, it wasn't an FDIC um, backed uh, bank because as far as I know of, it was a, it was a fractional reserve banking system. Uh Peter Schiff has said that uh, a lot of it is due to uh, media. 
Not when your bank is being accused of tax evasion. That's not media. That's how you conduct business. And he bragged about having uh, how it uh, how his bank had um, uh, declined like multiple uh, applications. It doesn't mean much as far as that part goes, considering the fact that you were on the hook for. I think millions of dollars in depositors' money, and you, the apparently the people in charge, the overall banking function of it, uh, used those depositors' money to fund daily activities, or I mean, daily function, uh, pretty much uh, those kind of things. You can't do that. You have to be. You have to be certain you know, have an insurance. That's what the FDIC is. It's an insurance corporation for the Federal Reserve to make sure that whatever depositors put in, if there's, there's a loss for, for whatever reason, there's insurance on there so that they can automatically get paid back. Whereas in fractional reserve banking is if you, uh, the owner of the bank uh if you lose this depositor's cash you had to repay that depositor one way or the other you are liable for their deposit that's why it's that's why it's a liability versus asset their money is your asset and them have <laughs> yeah and if you try to loan it out then your at the asset becomes your liability because if you lose the asset in any way shape or form it's your liability you have to pay back anyway so getting not off of that uh getting on to the um getting on to the uh article that i was reading earlier imagine the soviet union now i know there are two types of Soviet unions, at least there have been in the past, you know, like 70 years. There was one that was in the 80s that shut down in, I think, in 89 or some, something to that effect um, during the Reagan administration. Wait, that's Germany? No, that's Germany, yeah, I think. But anyway, whatever. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not much of a uh, history buff on that. But anyway, so I looked so I looked it up. Uh, there were two stories. Uh one that actually went with the whole notion of uh, the Soviet Union, which was uh, back in the 80s. From what I read, not, no matter what you see in the mainstream news, when they say there's too much money in the banking system, that's BS because banking I me mean, sits there. It, it depending on if it's at, if it's reserve, if it's at the Federal Reserve, is actually collecting interest on it. If it's in a, within the banking system, is for daily transactions. Um, anyway, so uh, to get to the one that's kind of, kind of going off to kilter here, which I apologize, but anyway, um, now the Soviet Union. Back in the 80s, one, they, there was a lot of sanctions against it, uh, mostly because of the fact I think the United States wanted to uh, move in with their corporations and whatnots, and Soviet Union wasn't having any part of it. So they felt isolated. They, they, uh, they didn't allow for a lot of trendy businesses in so they could take advantage of that marketplace. So, because of that, uh, the Soviet Union closed a lot of its trade and they printed money, but at the same time, they, they tried to do it at a point where to manage it, if you will. Like, told, uh, I forget who was, the, who, the, who was in charge of them, but that government told its people and tell its people to, uh, Make make your own perfume, make your own clothing, make your own food, you know, that sort of thing. You know, become self-sufficient, which today actually paid off a little bit because they actually, they've actually been able to ward off not only sanctions from God knows how many countries, but uh, have been able to pay, uh, pay uh, government spending. Now, some of it has been through selling gold to Switzerland, 
Yes, because even though they are a sovereign currency, it doesn't mean that they don't have uh, USD um, currency related bonds. They do, unfortunately. But the U.S. has forced them not to be able to pay that, not because they don't have the money, but because of the fact that they won't allow the payments to go through. Big difference. And because of the fact that the U.S. US uh, USSR today actually uh, in that region uh, controls a lot of the U.K. Uh, natural gas. Now, when inflation hit because of supply, supply chains, uh, this kind of opened the door, I think, to renewable energies, renewable en re renewable energies that rely on solar and wind. They have batteries and stuff like that that will hold the energy for a long period of time. Now, while some are not well made or well manufactured, hence the why some Tesla uh, Tesla cars blow up. Of course, at the same time, it depends on the outside heat and how it's and how it's maintained as far as the battery itself goes. Well, the car itself, anyways. The point being is, it's almost never because there's too much money in the in in the banking system in the economy. It's always because there is a hiccup in supply chain. Uh, this is, I mean, after the pandemic, this is the, is the biggest uh, test right there because you. This is what MMT actually helps me look in because my investigative mind becomes active. And so I look at every single country that we have a, a uh, have sanctions on and who is our top importer and who we uh, export to. Now look at their economy because since we are a global economy now, uh, thanks to, I think, uh, repealing Glass-Steagall and other uh, deregulations, uh US no longer has a complete supply chain like they had in the 70s and 80s and before the 70s uh is broken down those jobs were sent away or uh, the companies um companies found different ways of manufacturing the same parts so they did maybe not need people So yeah, uh, first of all, welcome back. Uh, secondly, yeah, it's almost, as I was trying to explain before, uh, MMT allows me to open up the mind, in, uh, the, the part of my mind that investigates everything. I mean, everything, you name it, I investigate it. And I mean, one part of my brain that helps me with this, and because I, I think I've learned how to, um, how to, uh, so I harnessed it. Harnessed it, I think is the proper term for it, but autistic. I'm autistic. So that gives me unlimited interest. If, I, if, I, if I'm really interested in it, then I follow through with it. I am obsessed with it. You name it, I am it as far as that part goes. Anyway, so, uh, so I look at that and I look at every single country who, have, who is either uh, who has outside debt inside debt, paid to USD, uh, trying to get off of the pay, uh, the uh, paying uh, with the USD, uh, having a, a floating exchange rate who doesn't have, who has a managed uh, uh, floating exchange rate, who has, uh, who's not in Eurozone, who is in Eurozone and stuff like that. That's an MMT tells me tells my brain to do is look into this look into this look at this what's going what's going on here what's going on there and because of this and because of the when i first started um watching steve grumbine uh with realprogressives.org uh and him with uh him with jordan sheridan uh on status quo you may not like uh, 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 Jordan, uh, Jordan Sheridan, but or the other way around, excuse me. Um, and I kind of didn't like him, but I don't, all for, with all due respect to him, I don't watch it for him. I watch it for Steve. I watch it for Steve's reactions. I, I watch him. I watch Status Quo to hear what, what Steve has to say about questions, whatever the case may be. Anyway, so 
Kim, Luke Parker, uh, who has been on hiatus recently. Macaron Cheese, uh, who did just had someone on talking about uh, gentrification. Also has someone on talking about inflation. Had Warren Moser on about uh, talking about inflation. Has Steve Keen. Uh, pretty much you name it. They, and he has a variable of who's who as far as the economic world that is not the Larry Summers, the the, the Larry Summers, the Paul Krugman's, the you know those people, because the mainstream economists are far and few in between because they they're stuck on one type of economics. Uh, sometimes monetarism, sometimes it's Keynesian, sometimes it's uh, Hayek. You name it, they go where they think that people will understand them when they talk. In reality, uh, they are just as confused as everybody else that goes on to mainstream economic uh, shows, the CNBCs, the Fox Business, you know, you name it, they they spout that out because that's the only that's all they know. They don't know how to turn their brain into, you know, uh, outside the box, like what MMT pretty much has become. And that's why when if you become sufficient in MMT, I'm not I'm not there yet myself, but if you become sufficient in MMT, you look at every single aspect of markets, economies, macroeconomies, microeconomies, jobs, uh, the world economies, countries, you name it, you look at every aspect of everything that is economic. And that's one thing that MMT has actually helped me open up my mind as far as that part goes. It's answered a lot of different questions, and everything that has said had, that I have looked up has been proven true. So, for anybody who is doubting what the what the glasses of MMT can do for you, you're 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 not going with the truth as far as economic policies, macroeconomic policies. You're going with what's trendy, what still is trendy, even though things like Milton, uh, Milton Freeman's quantity of theory of money has been debunked, and he's even backed off of it. That was. I think buried in as a fortune, uh, man, FT. I think I forgot the Financial Times and uh, from 03. Uh, yeah. So to me, that's a that's no longer uh, acquainted to anything as far as macroeconomics. Anyway, so to make a very long story short. You have to remember, every time someone talk a pandemic happens, uh, we will have we had the money as far as like putting into the economy. It's the supply we may not have, and that is be uh two twofold because we we have relied too much on international supply chain and haven't built enough of domestic supply chain. Um. If we did that as far as the domestic, then the chances of us having a hiccup in the supply chain would have been less and less. I do advocate for Medicare for All because that's inflationary. It's the government paying medical bills. It's kind of like uh, a way bigger version of a of a and way cheaper uh, insurance company, except a doctor just paid directly and doesn't have to haggle with an insurance company. Not only that, but that could be uh, a raise for employees who may be in unions who are fighting for health care because the boss is trying to put make your health care sabotage or not sabotage, excuse me, um, a hostage uh, for like, you know, any kind of negotiation. So it works in two folds. Then also uh, they can't use uh, insurance, uh, health insurance as a way of keeping your wages down. If there's Medicare for all that provides the opening for any worker that has healthcare tied to their uh, wages to get a, in my my view, an automatic raise. Um, Green New Deal, Green New Deal uh, allows for uh, infrastructure, uh, environmentally friendly infrastructure. 
uh, get puts more money into uh, research development of electric vehicles, electric grid, um, wind, solar, you name it. It gets us basically off of the uh, being involved in gas and oil as a way of having energy cost. Because majority of the time, in every year that I have seen, the majority of the cost goes into energy. Doesn't matter what kind of energy. It could be gas, oil, um, kerosene, whatever kind of energy you use do for your day of life. If we got on the other two things, then we would not be a part of that uh, that scenario, at least not long term anyway. And it wouldn't be to the point where it would put us all in debt. Um, or, you know, as far as not being able to get to work or whatever the case may be. Anyway, and puts, and puts more money in our pocket. So it's also deflationary. Anyway, uh, let's see, was there anything else? I must eat, just remember anything and everything that Austrian economics teach you, uh, says is the direct opposite in a fiat currency system that, uh, that works that they never look at both ways. They always look at one way and that's financial. Financial has almost nothing to do with supply chain except for investments and bringing in supply chain or uh, or um, satisfying the, uh, a, a supply of demand. Anyway, that's all I got to say in regards to that. I will probably be on back later for something totally different. Um but I want to share eh, forget about it. it was uh thanks for watching for now and I'll be back later on. Peace out for now. As a side note, the article I read earlier uh in regards to uh, it was it was another version of the uh USSR. <coughs> Excuse me. Um they mentioned AB5, which was a law that was enacted in California. It was meant to uh, it was meant to force uh, big corporations that uh, in, in the in the logistics uh, industry to uh, unionize or at the very yeah uh, unionize um, workers. Um, but the article, uh, yeah, that, the article wa uh, wanted bigger logistics corporations to count gig or independent truckers as employees so they could join a union. This thing, uh, this uh, article I read, mis uh, misleadingly said it was about uh, omission, uh, air quality, you know, CO2 uh, omissions. That was misleading and untrue, because if you look at the legislative uh, of AB5, then it'll state that uh, big corporations must hire on independent uh, truck drivers as employees so that they could be unionized. So... And of course, everybody on the you know quote unquote right is against unions. Uh, they're all about right, the right to work. So, well, you know, right to work, you have to have the right for benefits as well. So, anyways, I just wanted to put that as a side note. Uh, talk later. Stop for now.